Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, where we take a glance into blockbusters, indie films, and everything in between. I'm your host, Christian, and I am joined by my partner in film, Devin. And today, we're going to be giving our spoiler-free thoughts and insights on the latest HBO Max original series, which is a limited series titled Love and Death. This is a limited series inspired by the book Evidence of Love, A True Story of Passion and Death in the Suburbs, and a collection of articles from the Texas Monthly. And before we begin today's episode, you can listen to our podcast on podcast platforms around the internet. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. And if you are a new or seasoned listener to the show, we would love to hear from you guys. Follow us on Instagram and follow us on Twitter at Film Optics. That is optics with an X. Or you can email us at filmoptics at gmail.com for any movie related questions. Devin, happy Monday, man. It m- must be a case of the Mondays. Am I right? Well, well speaking of speaking of the Mondays, I think you uh, I think you called it an HBO Max original and that that is no longer a thing <laughs> that exists. So. Well, well, hold on, hold on, because that this okay. So for everyone who does does not know, uh, the HBO Max or Warner Brothers and Discovery have merged together um, into one company. Discovery bought out Warner Brothers, and HBO is obviously underneath what Warner Brothers as one of their biggest, um, I guess you could say, divisions, uh, television divisions, whatnot. So technically, Devin, <laughs> when we're talking about HBO Max originals, because this whole thing came out, we never really got a chance to talk about it on the podcast, but HBO Max is being rebranded into Max. Literally just, it's called Max. Who is Max? What is Max? I don't know. But it is the new streaming service that combines HBO Max and Discovery Plus into one streaming service. Why they changed the name? I do not know, but this whole, this limited series actually comes out on April 27th. Uh, It's on a Thursday, three episodes debuting. So technically it will still be HBO max when it debuts and it's going to go through May 25th, which is technically, technically it ends before the max takeover so technically it is an hbo max i don't know man i'm just i'm just looking at the poster right here and right on right on elizabeth's nose bridge says max original so that term has actually been a thing for a while because um ever since hbo max came out so um shows like titans or i would say um gosh what's another one um the harley quinn show those are Max Originals. That title has, or that phrase, Max Original, has been around for a while. They've been planning this plot for a while. It seems like it. So there's HBO Originals, which are shows like Euphoria, House of the Dragon, The Last of Us, um, Succession. But all of those shows are also available on HBO Max. It's weird because it's like they have two different divisions, but I believe the HBO original shows also um, broadcast on cable but max originals only broadcast on hbo max so things like harley quinn show um doom patrol titans um i'm trying to think of something else that's like technically a max original but those are just a few that comes come to mind so that is the differentiating uh, avenues there so technically <laughs> this will be one of the last hbo max originals for love and death but i just wanted to throw that out there that is a lot to explain and we don't have enough time <laughs> to go into all of that but so all you need to know is on may 27th i think it is or the 28th hbo max is being rebranded into max again <laughs> that is a whole different 
conversation for another day. But <laughs> as I mentioned before, we're going to be giving our spoiler-free thoughts on Love and Death. Again, this is a seven-episode limited series that will be debuting on a Thursday, April 27th, and followed by uh, weekly episodes throughout May 25th. So just wanted to let you guys know that. Again, spoiler-free. But really quick, Devin, how was your weekend? <laughs> I know we took a bit of a detour, but I feel like it was something we had to explain, at least in some depth. We may not have been able to explain all of it, but yeah, how was your weekend? And how was your Monday been? It was a solid weekend for me. Didn't do much. Um, I went to the Cavs game. That did not go well, unfortunately. Sorry about that, buddy. I don't watch basketball. Yeah, it's, so it's I have a no sad clue. time. But... <laughs> I have no clue what you're talking about because I don't watch basketball. <laughs> Um, oh, did they lose? Wait, the playoffs are happening, right? Did they lose in the playoffs? Yeah, it was, it was the first game of the first round. Against two? The Knicks. Nasty oh, Knicks. oh okay. so that's why my coworker asked me if, if I watched the, 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 he said the Knicks game. Cause he's from, he, he works out in New York in our New York office, but he's yeah, like, Hey, makes sense. <laughs> he's like, you guys said Knicks game. I'm like, Oh, the Knicks are in the playoffs. He's like, yeah, we won. He didn't tell me who they won against, but I was like, okay, now this, all the pieces are coming together. So I'm, I'm sorry uh, for that. You know, it, Sucks <laughs> for sure. But yeah, you've been watching anything outside of love and death or just been chilling, playing some video games. Um, I finished up love is blind and then they had a, a bit of a, a live fiasco yesterday, which I haven't whoa, whoa, whoa. watched any of. You've been watching love is blind. Am I now just yeah. figuring out about this? <laughs> I think I've mentioned it before, but it's you just might have. dumb, ridiculous, over the top reality. And it just scratches an itch. My roommate watches Love is Blind. I've sat down. Well, I think some of them are Love is Blind, but I guess there's other similar reality shows that kind of do the same thing. But I think I've watched a few episodes of Love is Blind with her, but I never really got into it myself. I know a lot of people, like you said, the, it was supposed to be like a reunion, wasn't it? Like a reunion show. Yeah, it was supposed to be live, just like the how Netflix did that Chris Rock stand a special live. I don't know why they're trying to make live events a thing. It's not going well. Mm, doesn't really seem like it. No, not at all, unfortunately. Mm -mm, no, sir. But hey, it is what it is, and uh, hopefully um, they'll, they won't run into the same issue again. Luckily, this was not their first time doing a live event. I'd rather it be their second time than their first. But then again, if their first live event went pretty well, what's going on in the second? <laughs> so it's all crazy there. But um, for me, I have not watched too much. I've been playing some Super Mario Odyssey um, on my Switch. And I think that's about it outside of uh, Love and Death. Oh, I finished um, Star Wars Rebels, that whole deal there. So the... the I rewatched season four of Star Wars Rebels. So very, very good. I, I would highly recommend it. But Devin does not like animation as much or that type of animation. So <laughs> not the Star Wars animation, though. You get used to it, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like it it starts to just flow well together. Like it's it it gets better with with every uh, I'll, season. I'll watch Visions like. Visions part two, just like we watched Visions Part One. Oh, oh yeah, we got those. You know, I got, got those in the inbox. I totally forgot about that. But with all that said, and without further delay, like I mentioned before, spoiler-free review we are doing here of the one of the last HBO Max originals, Love and Death. We're just gonna be giving our spoiler-free thoughts, our um final thoughts, and then our ratings of the first three episodes. I want to make that clear. We were given all seven episodes, but we are only going to be covering the first three episodes for this review and then depending on if we are interested enough to move forward we will do a full um limited series review for love and death um maybe we can get some um some some stands on some some friends of the show possibly so with all that said and without further delay we'll be right back after this introduction to love and death Man, they get to go to their jobs. We just stay home and... God, that's supposed to be enough. You always want more. Oh, 
You do, Candy. Okay. Whatever you have, you always want more. Yes, I do. And I'm not going to apologize for it. It is human nature to take risks, to go for something with a little thrill at the risk of falling. Oh! Are you okay? I'm fine. Are you sure? Would you be interested in having an affair? And we are back with our love and death spoiler free review of episodes one through three. This show is directed by Leslie Linga Glatter and is written by David E. Kelly and tells the true story of Candy and Pat Montgomery and Betty and Alan Gore, two church going couples enjoying their small town Texas lives. Until an extramarital affair leads somebody to pick up an axe. This series stars Elizabeth Olsen, Jesse Plemons, Lily Rabe, Patrick Fugit, Kristen Ritter, Tom Pelfrey, Keir Gilchrist, and Elizabeth Marvel. So, you know, limited series are like one of my favorite things just because it's nice to know that once you're watching, or at least the season that you're watching, it is a one and done. Um, again, this is going to be streaming on HBO Max, one of the last HBO Max titled originals until it just becomes Max, which is weird because it's technically already a Max original. As we mentioned before um, in the intro and the housekeeping of this episode, but the premiere date again is April 27, 2023. And we would like to thank HBO for sending us these screeners in advance so we can give you guys our spoiler-free thoughts on the first three episodes. So I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to pass the mic over to Devin so he can give his spoiler-free thoughts on Love and Death because he's been a little quiet over there about it. So I'm, I'm interested to see what he has to think about this new series. So Devin, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's very interesting because I went into this one like completely blind. I don't even think I watched the trailer when it first came out. I just saw that it was um, obviously Elizabeth Olsen and Jesse Plemons, and those are just two of the best actors we have. So I figured, hey, it's probably going to be pretty good and um, didn't really know anything about the story or anything regarding the actual show. So I did kind of did some research before recording this just to see what it's like the the true story is about. And I'm actually kind of curious to see if, if there's any comparisons that this gets to the Dahmer Netflix um, limited series that came out. Obviously, um, Dahmer is one of the most horrifying serial killers in our history. So I'm not comparing that one to one, but it's just kind of where do you draw the line between romanticizing slash fetishizing like a, a serial killer and like kind of telling a story, like kind of, Kind of have to figure out where that line is drawn because there were a lot of people that complained about the Dahmer story and how that's just bringing up uh, a lot of trauma for people who had to live through that and their family members. So I'm curious to see if there's any discourse around that sur surrounding this show because without spoiling too much, obviously, an axe gets picked up. So I imagine there's going to be some kind of bloodshed so at some point along the way because um, did you only watch the first three episodes or did you go on further? Uh, for the sake of this episode, I only watched the first three for now. Uh, did you go ahead and watch episode four onward or no? No, I, I stopped at three. So we're okay. both on that. I just wanted to be in that mindset to where, yeah, where the premiere will be with the first three episodes. But other, other than that kind of prologue where I just think it's interesting to see if there's any comparison between those two because it, it's kind of similar if you think about it. Just a limited series about mm. someone who committed crimes and isn't seemingly a good person but as far as the actual like show goes um so far very entertaining um like i said the two main actors elizabeth olsen and jesse Plemons, they're just really good at their jobs like i've i've had a, a, a man crush on jesse Plemons ever since the todd days in breaking bad <laughs> like he's just he's just one of us he's just a, a chubby guy who's just making it in hollywood he's got he's got a, a nice um uh spider-man girlfriend and he's just <laughs> he's just living life yeah, well, I, I'm surprised you didn't say um, your your stand for Jesse Plemons did not start when uh, Like Mike dropped because he was in that movie. He was like, yeah, I was not the... aware of that, but it goes that, <laughs> it goes back that far. 
Yeah, it's it's so crazy. And um, for my initial reactions, when it comes to this, like I said before, I, I really enjoy limited series. Um, there's something about them that gets your, you know, your blood going because you're going to get everything within a span of at least seven to ten episodes. Uh, this uh, series, of course, only having seven episodes all together. Uh, like Devin said, uh, we both stopped at episode three because this is like the premiere and we wanted to, you know, just share our thoughts about the first three episodes. And I got to say, I'm I'm hooked. Um, I, I love the strategy of how this is a limited series and how they're able to give us the first three episodes right out of the gate. Because typically it takes about three episodes for a viewer to get invested into a show. And when I watched the season premiere i thought it was very good a very solid episode but it really wasn't until season i mean excuse me not season two but episode two and and then episode three where i was like really into it because there's so many things happening um it's really nice to see elizabeth olsen play a separate character that isn't scarlet witch now don't get me wrong we both love elizabeth olsen as scarlet witch but it is nice to see her pursue other I mean, projects there are, there are some similar similarities mentally unhinged mother of two like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not, it's not very too far very off. true yeah not not too far off but this this is essentially um HBO Max's or Max's. Um, see, that is so weird. I'm sorry. This is essentially HBO Max's version of Marriage Story. Um, obviously, a lot bloodier. Um, again, we're only three episodes in, so we have four more episodes left. And I, I just, I want to dive in, but at the same time, I kind of want to wait for this to come out to watch it with everyone else, because I want to see how well the series does. Um, I believe the last limited series that I watched was a HBO original, and that was uh, Mayor of Easttown. And it is phenomenal, Devin. I absolutely loved it. You should definitely check it out. It is based in Pennsylvania. So, you know, it, it, it'll hit close to home for sure. But that was more of like a crime thriller as well as this. And speaking of Dahmer, Devin, uh, Evan Peters is actually a plays a major role in Mayor of Easttown. So you should definitely check it out. He does a fantastic job in that movie or excuse me in that limited series sorry we talk about so many movies here it's like you know we're switching back and forth but yeah overall i i love how you know the first episode really just it ex you know there's the world building of course you have it there and you're introduced to all these fantastic characters and when it comes to you know you see the relationship between candy and pat montgomery and then betty and alan gore and how they are on their own and, you know, things start happening, obviously, throughout. Things start going a little bit sideways. But Elizabeth Olsen's character, Candy, she's a very forward woman. Like, she knows what she wants. And I like how they were able to portray the affair within these three episodes where, you know, it they don't, like, they get into it, but not really. It, it does have, like, a setup and a payoff because you're wondering when, you know, the affair stuff is going to happen. And much like Devin, I watched the trailer once, but that was about it. I just knew it was about two people having an affair, then things going sideways. That's literally all I knew. And I'm glad that I didn't really read too much into it, but I did not know that this was based off of true events altogether. But I, I love how the affair is handled, where it feels more realistic, because uh, you may think that, it, I mean, it's... Everything surrounds the affair, but the affair only happens for a temporary amount of time before, you know, things start simmering or, you know, things start uh, breaking off into different directions. But yeah, definitely realistic for that time frame. Like, like nowadays, none of this stuff would work the way they're sneaking around in hotels and stuff. Like we, we all have cell phones now, so I think uh, it's a little easier to get caught. Yeah, much, much easier. And and I like when, you know, it, essentially almost like a period piece, this takes place over the course of two years between 1978 and 1980. And um, yeah, there's just so many things that are happening. There are timestamps. Uh, Devin, I'm sure he definitely appreciates that. So you don't have to worry about 
you know, the the time jumps and whatnot, because there are a few, but it feels seamless. It's not as apparent as it was in House of the Dragon. It's also a couple months, not like many, many years. Yeah, that 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 too. So you know, it's very manageable with the uh, the the time skips and the time jumps all together. And also, uh, oh, the needle drops, the needle drops in this series, absolutely love. Yeah, there's some great music. Got some BGS, heck yeah, that's some great stuff. Great, great music. But yeah, just overall for my my overall thoughts for that, or at least my initial thoughts, it's it's been a great ride so far, and I am. I can confidently say that I'm invested into this show and I'm definitely going to be watching uh, throughout the weeks. I don't know if I'm just going to, you know, watch the rest of the last four episodes or not, because I've been, but then I want to, but then I don't, because I, I love watching shows with everyone, you know, when it drops, like the street date drops, you know what I mean? Yeah. Having that communal experience. Yeah, it's it's just so much fun. Although I, I'm I'm wondering how this is gonna work out because obviously I think Barry is like the HBO's current like Sunday night like event show. I think this comes out on a on a Thursday, so it'll be Thursdays for this one. Yeah, HBO has been doing a lot of that where so, they they usually have certain nights during the week. Like obviously they say, they save their bigger shows for Sunday nights, like Barry, like you mentioned, and also Succession. Um, but both of those shows are actually on their last um, season. So the finales yeah. are coming up. But yeah, for this, this is a Thursday night show. And I feel like that's fine because we're in the middle of Barry and Succession already on Sunday nights. I feel like this is a nice, you know, almost middle of the week episode or show that you can kind of get into, especially since you're getting the first three episodes within the first week. And then there's only four more episodes. So, it, I mean, it's really only streaming for five weeks altogether. So it's kind of boom, one and done, and then you're out uh, type situation. But I'd be very interest, interested to see, you know, as we continue watching this, um, if HBO submits this for the Emmys. So that, that could be pretty cool as well. But I want to actually pass it back over to you, Devin. Is there anything else you wanted to mention in our non-spoiler section before uh, we give our final thoughts and our ratings and close out? Yeah, I think overall, I'm definitely hooked with the premise so far. Obviously, it is based on a true story. So if you really wanted to, you could just go read everything that happens, I imagine. But um, episode three had a great cliffhanger. So that kind of yeah. leaves you wanting more. And then I was considering watching a f the fourth, but I, I held oh. off for now. <laughs> oh. um, that, that being said, the, I mean, there are still four episodes to watch, but I am a little concerned because it feels like we're only really getting like some good character development for the, the obviously the main two characters, um, Elizabeth Olsen and Jesse Plemons characters, where it feels like every other character has just kind of been one dimensional so far. Obviously, that could change in these next four episodes. We can get some more information and see some more sides of these characters. But mm -hmm. um, especially, um, what's her name? Especially the character being played by... Ah, uh, Betty Gore? Yeah, her. And then um, Elizabeth Olsen's husband. And then... Pat Montgomery. Yeah. And Chris Kristen Ritter's character. Like, just very, very one-dimensional. Like, we have not learned anything about these other characters, really. But that could change. Right. And it seems that, you know, th there's a lot of what so far it's been like codependency between well i feel like there's been more development with betty and alan than there has been with pat and candy yeah, we've gotten some with betty but not a lot and i'm sure we will because obviously the end of season three of episode three yeah well i meant more of like the relationship between betty and alan you know everything that that does happen so far but i do agree when it comes to their spouses they are there they are there to serve the story and i think that's the tricky part with limited series is that you have so much to balance that you have to, you know, make sure that everything, everything is, you know, um, is explained and done by the end. And I think that's what mayor of East town did so well. Um, because it, it was, it, it was, it was a great show, Devin. I, I beg you to watch it. It was awesome. It has Kate Winslet as the main character. You know, we got some Evan Peters, a few other surprises in there as well, but honestly, what more could you ask for? It is a fantastic limited series um, from start to finish. 
But yeah, I, I do agree when it comes to their spouses. They are a little bit little bit more one dimensional, but maybe they're just served to be that way um altogether. But like you said, we have four more episodes left. So we'll just have to wait and see and, and watch with the, the the rest of the people. But let's get into our final thoughts and our ratings here. So I'll pass it over to Devin so we can give his final thoughts and ratings for episodes one through three of Love and Death. Yeah, final thoughts. Um, definitely entertaining so far. Elizabeth Olsen just putting the team on her back like she is used to <laughs> with playing Wanda and kind of similar characters. Like there's definitely some similarities there, like we mentioned before. Um, I love Jesse, Jesse Plemons. Um, so I'm seeing pictures of him recently. He's definitely slimmed down a little bit. So he's not oh, a, yeah. he's not much of a, has, as much of a thick boy as he was during the filming of this show, which is what the character called for because. He's not a looker in the character. This character, he's a kind of is what it's part of the mystery and intrigue is that someone of Elizabeth Olsen's stature would choose someone so schlubby and and <laughs> and Todd and like and what like Todd like Todd like and you know I really quick um, I thought that this. Not that I don't know if it went through like production issues, but I I have a feeling this was like announced a while ago and we're now just getting it but i'm not entirely sure what the story is there but anyway uh, what is your remember any of the announcements i can't remember i don't know maybe it was something else with elizabeth olsen i i could be you know just thinking about something else but what is your rating for the first three episodes did we want to do ratings i don't know it feels like pretty incomplete you know what you're absolutely right. <laughs> You're abs- I'm so used to us just going through the motion with our movie reviews. So yeah, we're not going to give our ratings, but um, you know, if we decide to do a full mini series, a full um, you know season review of the show later on, we'll definitely let you guys know on Twitter, um, but or and or Instagram. Just follow us over there at Film Optics. That's Optics with an X. But for my final thoughts um they pretty much echo devon's like this is a very interesting show i've been waiting for it for a very very long time i think it was just the fact that it was announced forever ago and we didn't know when it was coming out probably because of all the hbo or the warner brothers discovery merger and you know them gutting all of their uh <laughs> tv shows off of hbo max um you know but it's fine i guess um but overall i i'm enjoying this so far i'm enjoying the the chemistry between elizabeth olsen and jesse plemons um it's like i said before it's really nice to see elizabeth olsen kind of go in a different direction seeing her outside of the mcu picking up other projects because i feel like we haven't seen a lot of her outside of the mcu but you know maybe she's just busy with life you know taking a break you know, visiting family. We're not entirely sure, but I'm glad that she's back. And I'm glad to see Jesse Plemons back as well as the rest of the supporting characters. Um, you know, the, the small town, Texas, you know, church mind thing is kind of going on here. And you, you can definitely uh, hear those, uh, those, those light Southern accents in there. Some of them have it. Some of them don't, but Hey, that's just Texas. Always love a good Southern accent. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, oh, bless molasses draw, <laughs> bless his heart, <laughs> something like that. Or, hey, y'all, what's going on? I don't know. I have the worst southern accent, like in the history of man. But I feel like there's a difference between a Texas accent and then like a southern accent because it's a te- is Texas technically the south or is it just more considered the west? You know what yeah, I mean? I feel mean? like Texas isn't quite as as slow and drawn out. Like they've they got a little more pace to it. Yeah, I mean it's a huge state, but man, I don't know if I could ever live there. <laughs> Be riding on my carriage just <laughs> just to feel at home. I guess I don't know. Yeehaw. But <laughs> yeehaw. Well, maybe we can ask Sandy Cheeks. There you go. She's from Texas. <laughs> I want to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chart topper. A great episode of SpongeBob right there. But with all that said, that is a wrap on today's episode. If you like what you heard on today's episode, please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform of choice and make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. And make sure to share an episode of our podcast with a friend. 
whether it be your mother, your brother, or your significant other, make sure to share an episode of the Film Optics Podcast for the movie lover in need. And really quick, let's take a sneak peek at what's coming up next on the show. So, right now, you can listen to our Super Mario Brothers review, as well as our Suzume and our Renfield review, as well as our Air review. Just to throw an extra one in there, because we've been very busy. Doesn't really seem like this year is slowing down with uh, movie and TV reviews. So, you know, if you ever need some, you know, some some nice little push in extra direction when it comes to what movie or TV show you should think about watching, you know, again, share with all of your friends and family and tell them that we sent you. Tell them to look up the Film Optics podcast available on all podcast platforms around the internet. And really quick, what's on deck? We have the Mandalorian Season 3 review, which we'll be covering here within the next few days, as well as our Evil Dead Rise review and our Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret review, which I'm so excited to watch that movie. I don't know what it is. I'm just very excited. It looks like a ton of fun. Love coming of age film. So got that on deck for you as well. And again, thank you to all of our listeners. And remember, if you enjoy the show, leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay in the know. I'm Christian, and that was Devin signing off. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.